Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB, the Fast Track Ham License Guy here. The general exam contains several questions about calculating various values in series and in parallel circuits. There are problems for series and parallel resistance, capacitance, and inductance. Here's the good news. Even though several different electronic values are covered, there are really only two formulas to remember. And one of them is dead simple. The real trick is knowing when to apply which formula. So let's reduce this down to the two generic forms of the formulas. The first is one where all the values just add together. Whatever it is, total equals whatever it is, number one plus number two plus number three, etc. Clear through to whatever it is, n. The n means keep going until you run out of stuff to add up. Take all the whatever you gots, resistors, capacitors, inductors, and add them up. That's it. The other generic formula is a little fancier. The $10 name for it is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. Hoo -hoo. The reciprocal of a number is that number divided into 1. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. The reciprocal of 397 is 1 over 397. So the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals just means divide all the whatever you gots into one, one at a time, add all those fractions up, and then divide that number into one. Those two generic formulas work for resistance, capacitance, and inductance. Now we're going to start with resistance. If we start hooking up resistors, one right after the other, in series, they become one big resistor. After all, electricity doesn't know any difference at all between two 500-ohm resistors in series and one 1,000-ohm resistor. For resistance in series, then, we just add up the values. Simple enough. Now, I'm not even going to drag out the calculator to demonstrate that one. How about resistors in parallel? Now, that's where things get a little strange. Here's the formula for resistance in parallel. R total equals 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc., etc., till you run out of resistors. Now let's try one with a couple of resistors. We'll put a 500 ohm resistor in parallel with a 1000 ohm resistor. With values plugged in, our formula will be R total equals 1 over 1 over 500 plus 1 over 1000. Now here's where I really like the TI-30XS calculator, even though I admit it's a bit of overkill for the general exam. It lets me enter that just the way you see it there. Now here we go. We'll use the numerator denominator key. That's right here. That lets us enter fractions as fractions, rather than doing conversions to decimal form. So we go numerator-denominator, 1, and then we toggle down to the bottom and hit the numerator-denominator key again, and 1, toggle down, 500, toggle over so we get the plus in the right place, plus, and then numerator denominator again, and a 1, and toggle down, plug in the 1000, and hit enter. Ruh a 1000 over 3? Yeah. The TI-30XS assumes that you're trying to come up with a precise answer, and that is the precise answer. But there's a key to fix that. It's this little rascal right here the answer toggle key. You press that, and we find out the answer is 333.333, and those threes will go on forever. That's why it told you the answer was 1,000 over 3. But 333 is plenty close for our purposes, and it would be for the exam, too. Now wait. We had 
1,500 ohms worth of resistors. We hooked them up in parallel, and we came up with less resistance than either resistor in the circuit? Can that be right? Yeah, it is. Don't look at me like that. Blame wacky old Professor Ohm. If you've seen the Fast Track video on series and parallel circuits, or if you've studied this somewhere, you know about Kirchhoff's laws of circuits. One of the implications of those laws is that voltages are equal across all legs of a parallel circuit. So here's our circuit, and let's throw in a 6-volt battery at the top so we know the voltage, and we'll do a little Ohm's law problem here. Now R1 here is 500 ohms, and it has 6 volts across it. From there, let's get the current through this resistor. I equals E over R, so 6 divided by 500 is 0 0.012 amps through this leg of the circuit. Now for the other leg, 6 divided by 1000 is 0 0.006 amps through that resistor. Kirchhoff's law of current tells us that the total current in the circuit is the total through those two resistors, and that total is 0 0.012 plus 0 0.006, a grand total of 0 0.018 amps. Now we can calculate the total resistance in this circuit. R equals E over I, so 6 volts divided by 0 0.018, well, what do you know? 333 ohms of resistance in this circuit. For inductance in series and parallel, the formulas are exactly the same as the resistance formulas, except we plug in an L where there used to be an R. Now, just like with resistors, if you string a bunch of coils in a row in series, you end up with the total inductance of all the coils. And if you wire them up in parallel, you end up with less inductance than any of the inductors in the parallel set. Now, capacitance. The formulas for capacitance work exactly backward from the formulas for resistance and inductance. So for capacitors in parallel, we just add up all the values. C total equals C1 plus C2 plus C3, etc., etc. That's pretty easy to understand if you think about what increases the value of a capacitor. There are three factors that determine the capacity of a capacitor. That's the size of the conductive plates, what's called the dielectric coefficient of that dielectric, it's basically an insulator, between the conductive plates. And that's really just a numerical value for how good a dielectric is this stuff. And then there's the distance between the plates. As the plates get bigger, the capacitance gets bigger. As the dielectric coefficient increases, the capacitance gets bigger. And as the plates get closer together, the capacity increases. To keep it simple, let's say we're connecting perfectly identical capacitors in parallel. The dielectrics are the same, the distance between the plates is the same. Well, electrically speaking, what we've done is created a capacitor with plates that are twice as big, while keeping all the other factors the same. Capacitors in parallel add together. And by the way, they act exactly the same way, even if all those other factors don't match, because that's all accounted for in the farad value of the capacitor. Capacitors in series? A little more complicated question. The formula is that same generic formula we used for resistance and inductance in parallel, but with C's plugged in. So C total equals 1 over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, etc., etc. If we add a capacitor in series, 
we reduce the amount of capacitance in the circuit. Why? Well, without going into a bunch of highfalutin language about charge capacities and time constants and all the other mumbo-jumbo that goes with capacitors, let's keep the why of this simple. Here are two identical capacitors in series. If we thought of this as one capacitor, which we can do with components in series, what would we have? Well, a capacitor is two conductors separated by a dielectric. Okay, we have two conductors, those plates on the outside of this series, now separated by twice the thickness of dielectric, and with some conductive foil or something sandwiched in the middle. These plates in the middle wouldn't really count in the equation. Only these outside plates count, and we've just put an extra layer of dielectric between them not to mention adding some conductive material that's absolute junk as a dielectric, we have definitely created less capacitance than would be there with either of these capacitors by itself in the circuit. And it turns out that that very same reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals formula predicts the results just right. So, to review, for resistance and inductance in series, and for capacitance in parallel, the generic formula to remember is something number one plus something number two plus something number three until you run out of somethings. Just add them up. For resistance and inductance in parallel, and for capacitance in series, the generic formula is that reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals, 1 over 1 over something plus 1 over something else, etc., etc., till you run out of somethings. Okay, keep learning, subscribe to the channel, visit us on the AF7KB page on Facebook and at FastTrackHam.com. If there's a ham radio subject you want us to cover in a Fast Track video, by all means, use the Contact Us page at FastTrackHam.com and let us know about it. 7-3, AF7KB clear.